Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is International Master Bindi Chang with you uh, today. And today is going to be a very special dual cast. And this is my friend. My name is Alex Ferreira. And um, you're, where are you from, Alex Ferreira? Uh, I live in Toronto as well. Uh, checking out the games on the internet. Okay, and uh, I'll let you know that Alex Ferreira is actually a very active participant in the Canadian chess community. I think uh, one year he actually was like the number one Participate, participant, most active, player. most active player, and uh, yeah, so that's quite feat. You know, it takes a lot of time out of your day to play chess all the time. But I'm just waiting for my friend to play. So yeah, I guess uh, this okay. Okay, I guess we start. That's good. And uh, today, my friend here, White resigns, is actually Jory Daryl, and as you can see, his feet range twenty one twenty four against uh, the Pashos. And uh, we start off with a uh, Scotch Gambit, Scotch Scotch opening. And so far, so good. What do you think? It's pretty standard. Pretty standard, yeah. So uh, this G three line. I'm not a very active participant in the E four E five system, so I really don't know what's happening right now. Uh, G three. G three is a move I don't see. Often. Yeah, I'm, I'm not quite sure what to do here. Like. But All right, I'm gonna call it right now. Joey's gonna lose. Okay, well, um, <laughs> okay, well, that that, that was supposed to happen. So, uh, yeah. Hey, what's up? Okay. <laughs> so I guess we have three people here. But we uh, have an intruder in our cast. Intruder cast. Jonathan Yu. Yeah. He's, he's a perennial A class player from the Heart House Chess Club. He's a 1900 player. In other words, uh, he's okay sometimes. He's weak, but we like him. Yes. So so far, nothing really has been happening. But what has some space on the king side over here? And there's some chance. Nc2, right? Nc2. Yeah. Uh, not exactly. I wouldn't really touch this knight. I think if I was white, I'd go for king h1 first, just because there's some tricky with this. G4 is an interesting move, though. G4, G5. It's over aggressive, perhaps. It's very aggressive. I'm not quite sure if this is going to be effective, but definitely is an interesting move. And I think this queen might be trapped in some cases. If you go queen g6, then f5 is going to be very, very scary. Can black try queen h4, perhaps? Queen h4. Queen h4 pawn. Queen h4 might be might be forced, but okay. So knight g6. Not quite. I don't really believe in knight g6 because you can't really hit the f4 pawn in any case. But white does have some problems with his knight on d2. Knight on b1. I mean, he can't really move his knight. Yeah, the queen 7 No, f5 and f6 is possible. This definitely is really fishy. Really fishy for black. I don't really believe in his position. And uh, white white the covers the co covers the h4 square. Which is great. Okay, so white covers h4 and rook d8 and. Uh, Basically, uh, we're attacking e4, but not quite sure that's effective. Yeah, White's position is, is really, really good right now. He has a lot of space, and uh, f5, f6 is always in the air. Should Black try to counter with f6 or f5 somehow? Uh, f5 here seems to be interesting. Actually, yeah, okay, there you go. That's a nice call. Hey, you can probably hear us. F5 is a nice call. Okay. It looks like uh, if he lets White push it himself, then Black could be in more serious in, trouble. Although yeah. this is the kind of move you don't normally want to make, right? Exactly. Um, queen g3, okay. So this is definitely interesting because I think that White should play f5, f f6 himself, but uh, he lets Black play f5 here. So now after queen g3, um, take on e4 is possible, but I'm, I'm not sure if, if that's necessary. Maybe something like bishop b6 first is possible because uh, when knight comes to e4, you don't want to give him the possibility of taking on c5. Plus, plus I think White's going to go rookie one now. White also have, may have some ideas of uh, h4, h5. Yeah, h4, h5 is probably going to come to play soon, but most of the action is going to revolve around the f5 square. And uh, if, you, if black ever takes on e4, white always has f5, f6 coming in. So that's really dangerous right now. And uh, so queen f7. I think uh, right now, maybe knight b3, or maybe just takes on f5. But uh, I think the most possible move here is probably h4. The idea is h4, h5, h6. Yeah, don't touch anything. It's fine how it is. Yeah, white, sh white probably shouldn't just, white shouldn't touch, touch any of these pieces. His position is still very, awesome. very, very impressive. It's very awesome. Yes. And, uh, okay, so I guess, what do you want, guys want to talk about now? Jokes? No, I, I still like the idea of king h1 first, in case white ever plans to move that knight. Um... So what happened, Bindi, if he takes on a two? 
after age four. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't recommend taking any two. That looks that looks awful. Oh, really? I, I really hope that. I think uh, he gets an extra pot. <laughs> and Heise is in that room. You know what? It's true. Uh, I, I'm not 100% sure that that's yeah, that terrible. Yeah, it's it's four, H4, H5. H4, H4, H5 looks very It's most very logical. Like, it, this is very strong, and I really don't think that Blacksmith survived this. Wait, so what are you doing, like G6 afterwards, or...? Uh, it doesn't have to play G6, you just want to play H5. Well, first of all, where, where does the Black Knight go, even? Well, Black Knight has well, gone E7. E7. Which is terrible. Yeah, so uh, this definitely is, isn't is something... Oh my god, he has just gone E2. Oh that. my god. It's not, stuff. you know what, I don't know if you, at this point we can criticize that hardly. It's not like Black no, has many have... options. That's true. At least he hits, takes B2, takes C3, maybe he's trying to hit something... Tenderizes the center a little bit. Well, that's why and I'm always asking because you need like white has to have some. Hmm, how does white break through here? It's good like point. this. That's good, that's actually a good question. I never considered that. Consider that. Like it looks nice, there's a lot of space, but it's just three. actually one thing that I think white should have done is actually instead of playing h5, he should have just taken on f5. I think that was definitely an interesting idea. And Still, uh, bishop h3 right now is not so bad. But bishop h3, I think queen f7 might might just might just be in play. Um, yeah, this is this is quite confusing because it looks like black should be lost, but I'm not quite sure how. It it just look it just looks awful. Maybe uh he can take on e takes f five. It's it's possible to just take on f five. Uh, okay, yeah, so I was, I was yeah, thinking B3. about this move, but like mm. uh, I don't know if b three is the type of move that you, work, that you make yeah. in these types of positions. It's really slow. Yeah, it, it stops the white black queen from getting back to f seven, but. Uh, I, I don't think that's uh, going to be too effective in this case. I think Black probably still has to try Queen B2 even if there's no pawn. Queen B2, yeah. Queen B2 to Queen takes C3, something like that. Just basically go on this uh, file and hopefully do some, do some damage on this rank. Because Black's pieces are in the best uh, defensive mode. And even though uh, Black's position has seemed to be like really awful in the past little while, he does have a pawn, so that doesn't mean something if you ever change his queens off. But uh, I think the idea of white is probably going to play B bishop h3 next, actually, because now the queen can't back can, can can't come back to f7 anymore. Um, it's also possible for black actually to just take on d4 and then go bishop b4, tagging this knight. Because after um, let's say this knight goes somewhere, then this b3 pawn is going to be hanging as well. So that's definitely a possibility. Plus, if you take this knight away, then there's less pressure on f5. But okay, queen b2 so is probably forced because uh, white was also threatening uh, knight uh, two to f3 and rook over lift, trapping the queen almost. Oh yeah, the the, the queen looks like a bit of trouble there. So even now, maybe well, rook c1, rook c2 like, looks pretty awful to deal with. It's not forced, but like it's just an annoying move. Black is just like trying to take pawns. Yeah, so he's Queen asking choose. White how he's going to break through and want to try to take as much stuff as he can. Yeah, that but, sounds like Jory. But but uh, at this point, I'm not even 100 percent if White needs to break through with the Queen's on B2 completely out of play. Well, he's never going to trap it, really. I'm not so sure. So if he just loses pawns without doing anything, he's likely going to lose the game because he's overextended and then the center will open up. Like, like he has to do something, in my opinion. If White just does nothing, he's going to lose. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, this is a this. They don't have that much. F five was really strong. Like, F five kind of <coughs> killed his play. He has to like. Yeah, yeah White should have played it. White well, should play F five, F six. We had a chance for sure. I think Rook C one might be forced here. Rook C one, Rook C two, but yeah, but if he I goes Rook C one. So. But then it's not really very it's, pleasant. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's like, like not a great passive defense. So surprisingly, I think that White actually is doing all right now. So Queen six C three. This looks like a move that. I would definitely make here because it looks like a really good pawn to take. So, I think he wants to play hmm, knight takes f five or something. It's but it's possible, but uh, at this point, yeah, black's just gonna get two pawns and uh, c one, queen d three, I think. Queen d three looks actually really really strong because uh, if this knight ever moves, then bishop takes e three, and uh, that that seems to be all right. Queen b four, yeah, it's not not the best, but. So, so it's right. Knight takes f5, bishop takes c5, yeah. pawn takes, pawn takes f5, knight d4. Okay, so knight e2 is coming or rook e2. So this is just great for black. Yeah, black is 
pretty much won now. So he turned like a lose losable looking position to uh Oh, oh knight two. Queen takes d two, I think. Knight c one. Okay. That's weird. Should just put it by rook one. Yeah, but they don't have much time left. Yeah. So at this point, I think it's gonna be flagging. So I guess we'll, we're gonna see uh, who's better here. So queen takes. So white actually got some kind of garbage plan here coming up. Queen f6. Oh, oh, oh queen uh, c three. Not good. F six would have been much more practically speaking good. But yeah, I guess we're just gonna wait to see what what happens now. Some so, on the clock there. So there. This is surprisingly not so simple for Black to win. No, I think it's pretty simple. Well, with well three at this well, point, at this yeah, point, with the time, yeah. it's all time. It doesn't matter. So uh, wow. that's that's a game. So I guess my prediction was wrong. Uh, uh, White actually surprised. resigned. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. No. No. Apparently. Yeah. White resigned. Yeah. White resigned. resigned. White, white, resigned, white as resigns. As black predicted. But why did he resign? Why just flat? So that's that's a bit different. Yeah. Wow. But uh, yeah, that was an impressive game. So uh, you this guys is. Are talking to Hi, did you help? Yeah. We, yes, we are. Okay. So I guess uh, that wraps it up. And um, thanks oh. to my co commentator here, Alex Ferra. Actually. Want to say something, Alex? Oh, thank hey, you guys for you watching. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, guys, guys. Yeah. No, right, thank you guys for watching. Uh, we'll try it some other time soon. Thank you very much. Bye bye.